Well, I noticed changes for 18 months <laughs> and I kept hearing this voice say, go to the doctors, go to the doctors. And in the end, I swear I was at a traffic lights and it was like someone was sitting beside me screaming, go to the doctor. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right. As a kid, I was always, you know, fossicking in for rocks or pretty things in nature. I've had many faces, like um, constantly evolving now, like started out at 18, went down to Melbourne to uni, wanted to change the world, did behavioural science, ended up in public relations and media. And I, I don't think my body particularly liked the chaoticness. I noticed um, tingling feet and it was coming up my leg. And I told a friend who um, has some neurological stuff and she goes, Marley, that's not normal. So I went to my GP and he ordered an MRI. And I think that this is when I grieved the most because it came back and it was lit up like fairy lights. I don't think I've ever felt comfortable in my skin and I've had to get comfortable <laughs> through a lot of pain, a lot of tears. And I had a million doctor's letters to say what impacts it was that I had. And it started to progress quite quick. And then I just was like, well, the NDIS is there for people like me. Because I think a lot of people don't feel, um, you don't feel worthy. I'd love heaps more of them because they, they fill them out, but they're lacy. I have been on the NDIS for three years and diagnosed in 2018 with progressive MS. Uh, I live in rural Victoria in Tatura and love life where I live. I've got ramps, I've got the bathrooms fitted out. The bed was a huge thing. Exercise uh, physiology support, which has been huge and then you get support coordination for everyday living. So that's when people become my arms and legs. So I have Steph who helps me do um, a whole range of stuff. So these people become such a personal extension of you and I get emotional about them because they're literally my little um, angels. And they, like, they give me my dignity too, which is really, really important. I've always been naturally creative, always had a project on and I just started collecting um, bits of stuff and putting them in jars and I thought oh that looks really pretty and I've always dived into that creative side. Okay so welcome everyone to our, um, our mini wreath party. I'm so blessed to be able to have Steph as my arms and legs to be able to do this, which just naturally evolved. We just but started. yeah, and it just took off. And there's something really special about bringing women together. I think there's just something really primal about it. And then I just love listening to the oh, laughter in the room. But yeah, I honestly, was, I was going to write to the NDIS and just say, look, um, I'm a success story because you've given me back my life. I'm able to, you know, now go and do something that I, I didn't know I love. I can tell you that people that have gone through stuff, they're strong. They may not look like they're strong, but they've had to dig deep. Yeah, my biggest thing I'd probably want people to know is that your journey is really valid and um, ask questions, but, you know, just if it doesn't look like anyone else's, that doesn't matter. If you had have said that to me at the start, I would have said there's no way X amount of years, you know, we're three, four years down the track that Marley would be smiling and saying how blessed I feel. No way. Okay, smiling everybody. Beautiful.